Uh, this is my paint palette with some brushes uh, that I'm using here. I've uh, th These colors I will talk about as we go along with the demonstration. And, and if anyone uh, can't hear or, or hasn't picked up what colors I'm using, please, uh, please just say so. And uh, either in the chat or, or whatever, but I'm happy. W what I will try and do is every time I use a color, I'll, I'll try and talk about it. So that's the paints. They are all artist quality paints. They, they sort of vary a little bit, mostly Winsor & Newton, some Dale Rowney and, and a couple of Paul Smiths here, but they're all good quality. That is professional artist quality paint. I, unlike uh, a student quality paint, which is um, tends to be a lot cheaper. Uh, both of them will produce you watercolors, but uh, if, if I always feel that if possible, get fewer good quality paints than a lot of student quality paints. Yeah. We'll talk about that as we go along. The only color I don't have here is white. There's a little gap there, but I have a little tube of white gouache. And, and I think I think in this painting, I might use it right at the end. Uh, so I'll come back to them. The, um, <clears throat> the brushes I'm using uh, are, uh, a, a mop, a squirrel head mop, designed to pick up a lot of water, and also designed so that you can get a sharp point with your the tip of your brush, as well as uh, having it flat and a lot of water. I've got a, a smaller version of that here. I'll, I'll try and remember each time I'm painting to tell you what brush I'm using. I, I've also got a rigger, and these are probably three of the brushes I use most of all. Uh, none of them are terribly expensive. These are the, these are squirrel hair, but imitation squirrel hair is, is pretty good as well. I, I may well be using this brush, which is the cheapest brush I have here. I've taken it from my grandchildren's painting set and taken a pair of scissors to it. So it's had a really bad haircut. <laughs> but um, I may well be using that today, quite a useful one. And the other brush I might use is uh, this thing called a dagger. Uh, again, it's a um, squirrel, uh, and it's it's a bit like a rigger in that it goes to a very fine point, but it holds a lot of water, and it's almost impossible to to use um, to, to predict what's going to happen with it, which, which gives you some quite interesting effects. And lastly, the paper I'm using is a a cotton rag, uh, 300 gram weight paper or 100, uh, 140 pounds weight paper. Uh, this this particular one is Arches, but th th there are lots of, I, I use uh, Sanders uh, Watman paper quite a lot. Uh, and I nearly, I, I'm, I'm more and more now I paint with a, a surface quality known as Knot. So it's it's not highly smooth, which which is known uh, usually known as cold pressed, hot pressed rather, um, and it's not rough, which is known as rough. So make it simple for artists. It's called not just. I don't even know what that means. Uh, and the water, and I'm using a brush now. <clears throat> a word on the uh, the subject matter. This um. This is a, a hilltop village called Vezzano di Liguri, um, which um, I, I have to say, I kind of had the misfortune to have to spend a few days just below this. The van that I had driven down to the watermill in this year and was going to drive back broke down on the day that the course finished. And I ended up spending, my wife and I ended up spending just under three weeks going from one hotel to another or campsites and so forth, whilst we had, we suffered three different breakdowns. However, there were pluses to all of this. And in uh, in the first stay up, uh, we, were, we were put into a hilltop village called uh, uh, Vizano di Ligure, uh, uh, in inferiore is I, I don't know if that's good enough for you, uh, Lois. Uh, pronunciation oddly it was called uh, um, we felt uh, inferior, it, and when I looked out of our window, we saw this view, 
which was the um, superior um, hilltop. It was just above us. So the painting that I did, which is this one, which which I posted as my um, practice painting, was the painting I did sitting uh, at the breakfast table, uh, looking up at the um, uh, at this particular hilltop village. Lo these wonderful hilltop villages that you get all over Italy, and uh, we, we were had the misfortune, uh, we had the fortune uh, of um, being housed and homed in one of these for a few days in a hotel. So the the subject matter is this it, the um, I can't remember which photograph exactly I sent you, but I took a number at different times of the day. You know, for instance, here is a brighter one. Uh, I think taken probably nearer midday. It's all the shadows seem to filled in a bit here, uh, and this one which looks slightly duller um, was taken mid-morning I think uh, and <clears throat> I, I'm going to use in my uh, play of light the, the mid-morning one because the light is coming in from the left this way coming in here going like that and it's throwing shadows on the other sides of the buildings this this one here has the buildings, are, although it's brighter and it's a better photograph, they have uh, flattened out a bit uh, be, because there there isn't that sort of contrast in, in the light. Uh, they're pretty much the same, taken both from the same table I was sitting at, so um, it, uh, whichever one is good. What, what I've done, if it's helpful, is I've printed out both of these as smaller pictures and I'll, if i put them there are you able to see them so this was early autumn um summer was sort of although the, the weather the weather was fantastic the whole time we we were uh, we were trapped waiting for the, the mechanics to deal with the, our van. The weather was brilliant. We had great time uh, there. But but uh, I, I'm quite interested in capturing, as maybe I might hear, uh, something of a softer late early autumn, late summer, early autumn light. Uh, when you do your paintings, it may be that that you'll end up making them look more like summer or more like autumn, whatever it is. Quite often with a watercolour painting, any painting, you 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 just follow what's happening, where the, where the paint takes you, in effect. So my, my intention is to make it look bright, soft, um, as mid-morning light. And a lot of that is to do with what I'm going to do with the sky. I've, I, I, mean, I haven't put... A dark blue or a, uh, a warm sky there. I brought in clouds deliberately just to cool everything down just a little bit. Right, just a word on the process I'm going to go through and then we'll we'll go into the painting. I'm going to split uh, this painting into four parts, four stages. Um, the first being the drawing, uh, and also I include in that th talking and thinking about the composition. The second being putting down washes. And the third, I, I didn't call the third one, it's just, it, it's a longer stage, it's putting down pretty much all the other color and tones and values and things of that nature. And then lastly, just taking a look at what we've got and putting in any accents uh, that that might be needed. So we'll start with the the first stage here, which um, is the drawing stage and the composition. Now, I did ask if you'd be good enough to 
come with a prepared drawing here. Because there's quite a lot of drawing and we could spend quite a long time in this drawing, uh, but I have begun the drawing. I'm, I'm going to finish it just to give you uh, a bit of time if you want to make alterations or change around and to see how I'm drawing and also give me a chance to talk about the composition. So let's do that first, the composition. Here's the photograph taken from the, the balcony I was sitting at. And um, uh, the, the first thing that uh, it, it crosses my mind when I look at it is that there's an awful lot there going going on there. Even with a sort of flattened out photograph, as you, you often get, there's, there's a lot of visual activity uh, taking place here. Um, the... The, this, I guess, this area here, uh, the buildings, including the church, uh, is is the focus for me on this. That's the real interest. Um, but there, there's lots of other things going on. You've got the sort of car park down here. You've got a steps and a walkway down here. Um, buildings scattered around, and of course, a lot of green, a lot of trees. A lot of bushes, a lot of different greens, which always makes people a bit worried. So what I'm trying to do in, in, in this is simplify it down as much as is possible. The first thing I'll do is cut out. Um, uh, for me, I'll cut out things that aren't very necessary. Uh, in my in my drawing, when I in my painting, when I was sit, sitting there, I'd actually put in this little car park here, but... I, I, I covered it up with trees in the end because I, I thought it was a, it was just getting in the way. Um, and we, we have an interesting um, line going up from bottom left up to the top of the hill and then up to the trees running that way. And I was intrigued by this line going down that way, forming a kind of triangle. Um, and although it is only a telegraph, telephone wire or whatever, um, it, it seemed to me as I was going along that I wanted in some way acknowledge that happening. Other aspect of this, of course, is the one of perspective. How, how we're looking up at this hilltop village. Um, in fact, where we were staying was... A hilltop village as well it's just that when i woke up in the morning i saw this one and i hadn't appreciated it was there slightly above us but pretty much everything um from sort of here upwards we are looking up to and that that is something we just want to bear in mind when you're doing your drawing you're looking up at things and the drawings that we make should try and reflect that happening so if i put that there so i can see it for a moment and just continue with my drawing and bring out various points as i go along i'll, I'll whiz through this because i'm as i said i'm hoping that mike most... someone's just asked what the size of your paper is just so we can tell them it's about 11 11 by 15 something inches okay thank you that's yeah that size uh, in, in fact, the one I paint, this one I did in Italy, is slightly larger. So I've actually, I'm, I'm coming down in size a, a little bit, but um, for doing this. So <clears throat> um, I'm using a soft pencil. Um, this is a 2B. And I'm putting in, as always, as little as I can get away with. And then I'll try and continue with the drawing as the painting develops. Uh, and uh, when I'm talking about the perspective of things going out, let's take let's let's look at. Can you let me put it in? Let's let's look at that building there. Um, if you've got your own photographs, but and you look at the angle of the the roof going away from you that way, and the angle going away from you that way. It's those 
I mean, my eye level is somewhere down here, I would say. So everything that's above my eye level, if it's going away from me, will be coming down to my eye level. 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 This one, this yellow house here, the large one, uh, is not quite as extreme as that, but it's still coming down to my eye level that way and that way. What is always constant are all the verticals, you know, the, this this edge, that edge, um, these ones here. They are they are all constant wherever they are, however high they are or not. So let me um, just delve into doing a bit of drawing here. Uh, I'm going to indicate uh, the trees by doing something like that. I've got a building I'll put in here. So apologies to you who have completely drawn this, but uh, um, if there's anyone who wishes to make any alteration, that's fine. Um, what's happening here? There's a building down here somewhere. So the building here, yeah, let's put that in. Obviously, things are larger as they're closer to you and small as they go away, but um, this village has stood here for a long time, so although they may have roofs that go in odd directions, it's still supporting uh, the roof. Let's put a, something in there. And I used to go walking up here every morning just for a Get a bit of exercise. Uh, what have we got here? We've got lots of greenery. It is it is a real um, problem, all this um, green. So let's see if we can resolve that as well. Where am I here? This one. Uh, that building in here. There's another building there. And if I add or take away one or two buildings, it's it's not going to make a great deal of difference to the overall effect. Let's come over here. So I've got the church is partially hidden. This building here is what's going on over here. So when I'm drawing, <clears throat> I'm uh, I, I'm always drawing imaginary lines. And for instance, these buildings here, and this the other side of, of the church, um, I, I just want to see where they are in relation to the church and, and the high points. So they are actually below the highest point on the painting. So they're going to be down here somewhere. Lots and lots of bushes. It's, um, this light colored um, bamboo, I think it is. Um, that's that's quite nice. So we're getting the thing about the greens is is that <clears throat> there's going to be the play of light on the, the where the light is catching the trees and the bushes, and where the shadows are. But also, there's going to be a play of different kinds of greens. You know, the 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 bamboo here. Where should we put that? Uh, If you want to move your bushes around, that's fine. I'm, I'm quite happy to do that. 
the the different kinds of greens you get. This this bamboo is um very much a sort of bluey, uh, cerulean bluey kind of green, whereas opposed to lots of the greens that are going on up here are have a much warmer yellow in them. And um if everything was exactly the same, oh, is that building here? I think would be useful to put in. I didn't put it in the first time. Uh, it, it, to have a, this variety uh, is really helpful to break up all the greens. And we begin by doing that right at the early stages of the wash, as I'll show you. I haven't put any of the windows in yet. Just make sure I've got enough buildings as a... Uh, yeah, what's going on here now? Bring that telephone wire thing somewhere like that. It's, it's a bit different from the painting I did when I was there, but I, because I've changed sizes a little bit. Okay, so what's going on up here? Let's put something in the village up here. What's that running? Oh, yes. The other thing is that I'm deliberately going to paint less the edges i mean it's, it's quite a good thing in a painting anyway not not to normally not to paint the edges in too strongly but in this case as i have done with this painting i'm i'm happy just to tail off when when i think i've i've said enough about what's going on here if i've if i've if i've given the message about what i feel about this then i'm not too fussed about what goes on around the outside It also saves me having to do lots more green, um, which is a problem to see what's happening up here. I'm going to indicate one or two windows just to help me. Remember when you're putting in windows and in buildings and so forth. I've I've spoken already about the perspective of the the line of the uh, the roof going that way because it's it's above my eye level, which is here, and that. But that applies to everything else. That applies to doorways, to windows. So if you take this building here, and just do a couple of lines like that with that. That's going to be something like the the angle that these are going at is coming down to my eye level. As it comes to the eye level, it flattens out a bit, of course. Um, but ev everything is affected by that aspect of the perspective. There's lots of posts here that I didn't quite pick up on when I was doing the first painting. So... Uh, Okay, I think I think that's enough for me at the moment. I can always come in and draw some more if I want to later on, but I, I feel I've got to the stage now where I want to move on to putting down some washes, which is our second stage. I'm going to use uh, the big mop brush completely for this, and um, I'm I'm going to flood the paper with water completely um I, I i a lot of people very happy to get a spray and spray um the paint i do that sometimes but normally i just use my brush and i carry water across at this stage i'm looking at what is the lightest color to put down because that will 
as we add, as we go into darker and colors and, and think about values and so forth, it is the light color that's really going to uh, influence the feel of light in the in the painting here. So the other thing I'm I'm going to oh I'll, I'll just so that I'm put a few roofs in uh, a few um chimney pots I don't know whether particularly ones that are catching the light a bit at this stage. Um, I'm I'm going to put down the the the, the warmth of the color in the buildings. Yeah, um, I I know that they are sort of terracotta and uh, and another wonderful Tuscan uh, Ligurian uh, colors. We can come to that later on, but I want to put down something that's that's the lightest. There's nothing here, incidentally that for me is white, with the possible exception of this, this line here. So there's nothing I need, I, I can't paint over at this stage. Um, and, and indeed, when I did this painting here, I used this tube just to pick up that white anyway. So I'm happy to spread the color around, keep it as light as possible. I can always come back uh, when it's lighter later and i'm going to wet the whole of this I, I i think if i were doing this and i probably did it when i did this painting i'd do the sky at this stage but i want to treat the sky separately um the, the, it's it's not a very tricky sky, but uh, so what I'll do is I'll put down the washes over all of this. Um, and and then when we come back and we start our next painting, I'll actually do the sky in one hit and then move on down to the rest of it. So forgive me for not uh, putting anything in on the sky. I'm happy to wet it. it, it that doesn't matter at all. In fact, let's do that. Uh, just water. Because I want the whole of the paper to be wet here. Right, the light color, putting it in with a big moppy brush like this. Um, you really can't go wrong with a wash, with washes, if you keep them as light as you possibly can. Uh, if you look at your scene, your photograph or whatever it is, and you, you, you pick out, well, what's the lightest bit here? I'm going to, uh, I'm going to use uh, yellow ochre. Yeah, this can you see if I move it up? There we go. It's, that's yellow ochre. I I have a, a, another color which is similar to this called raw sienna here, which I used to use all the time. In fact, I used to say often to people, never go anywhere without it. But I, it, gradually, I've just felt it's a little too yellow, and I've gone for this uh, yellow ochre. So. Um, that's what it looks like. You can see it on here. And I'm going to take this across all the buildings. If if there's a building that I feel ought to be particularly white or light coloured, uh, I might I might um, just dab it out a bit with a with a rag. But it will still have some of this yellow ochre on it. So if I take that across here. And, and over the roofs, the whole buildings, and just run it down. And, it, and we got some buildings here. I never did quite resolve those ones. I'll come back to those. And we'll put put that down here. It's it's very light. If you want, if you wanted to make it lighter, bring in some water. If you want to make it lighter, still as I say, uh, dab it out a little bit with this. But the colors we're going to put over this will um will be will benefit from the overall feeling of light uh, that you'll get with 
Yes, I, yes, anyone, Mike, uh, I have a number of people asking if you're painting on a slant or whether you're flat. Painting on, I'm painting on a flat surface for the benefit of uh, my audience. Um, normally, I, I prefer to paint upright. Um, and one of the good things about an easel that accommodates watercolour painting is that you're able to flip it backwards and forwards. But normally, I'm, I'm happy for the paint to run down. But it's easier for you to see what I'm doing here. Now, this is all very wet. Okay, make sure, just make sure that the whole thing is wet here. Um, and now I've made a good enough statement about the lightness. Any other buildings I might add in? Um, now we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to come in now and, and do something about the, the greenery that we have around. Um, there are a couple of places here where I would like, uh, the, particularly for these these upright poles here. You see this, these one or two that that are used, I suppose, mostly for telephone wires. Um, and I've drawn, I've drawn one of them in here, um, which I'd like to come out light. It's come out light in my painting. Yeah, but I can make that light. It doesn't matter about painting over it because I can make that light by bringing darkness around it later on. So, um, as I said, there's nothing here that needs to be, that can't be touched by paint. Looking at the, uh, which picture should we go for? Um, no. uh, let's, let's get, looking at the lightest colours here, I'm going to drop in. I'm going to drop in some uh, of this sort of bamboo type green here, and how do I mix that? Uh, some lemon yellow. Your your paintings happy, really happy. It can be sitting in a puddle of water at this this stage. There's, there's no worries at all about that. Um, and do I want any bits light? Let's make let's make that bit of the church a bit lighter because that's okay I will. right that will do so i'm going to mix this sort of uh, bluey bambooey green i've I put on some lemon yellow yeah and i'll go to one of my three blues i have a cerulean a cobalt and an ultramarine blue the ultramarine has a lot of red in it and at the other end of the, the scale, the cerulean has a lot of yellow in it, making it green. So I it, I don't want to use ultramarine. That's going to make it too dark. If I pick up a little bit of cerulean and add that. Okay, let's make that a bit blue. I did say it was a bluey green. And let's pop that in here as something light. Um Bring some of that light down here. And where else shall I have some of that green? Um, let's have some of it down here, maybe. So I'm, I'm kind of making up my greens now a little bit, um, but just varying them uh, a little bit of green. I'm going to put a lot of yellow, warm yellow green here in a moment. Um, and, and I'll go back to my lemon yellow and uh, maybe add a bit of cobalt to that, the one in the middle, and see what we get there. If it's, I'll put a bit of that, it's, it's a little bit, little bit more yellow here than um, the first one I did, so that would be fine. Let's drop that in. You're going to find in this painting, if you're painting like this, that um, you, you're kind of going to have to respond to what you, you put down. Let's put a bit of that light green here. Uh, I, I'll, I'll go back to my, I'll, I'll go to this next yellow, which is aurelian or cadmium. It's the equivalent of cadmium. That's, that's just taking a little more yellow now uh, and put in, uh, add a bit more, put in something here and uh, up here a little bit. And the colours you'll find will be blending in, merging into each other. That's that's quite all right. Let's uh, come down 
here to do a bit more of that. What am I going to do up the top? Let's have a look. Um, where the trees are skylined. Um, oh, I do. I can see a little bit of sky through that. So let's let's just where the trees are skylined. They're they're dark against the sky, and, and um, we can come into that later on. All right. Um, Go back to my lemon yellow, and I'm going to put some of it a little bit down here. That, that's a bit bright, possibly. So a lightest, and a um, little bit down here. So that um, bamboo bit, I, I seem to be focusing a bit on that at the moment, so that's quite good. I'll, I'm happy to do that. Any other? There's some greenery here. I have a color here called sap, uh, sap green, this one, which I, I do use a lot. And if I put it down on the um, <clears throat> the palette, it comes out of this color. It's, it's actually called permanent sap green. I, more, mostly when I use it, I add something to it. So uh, I, I might add, um, uh, let, let's, let's add a, a little bit of lemon to it and see all oh, this. A strong enough. I'll um, I'll put it down again and sap green it is and add um a little bit of this blue to it, blue it down a bit and and come in with a lot of water and that and maybe yeah it's just playing around with it a bit here. We've got got things ah got all sorts of interesting things happening with um trees amongst the buildings so uh do i want to just put a bit more let's put a bit more green there so there's a variety of greens we're playing with i'll, I'll put some of that green that i've put down here and i as i mentioned to you earlier i haven't um don't need to remove that Okay, I, I haven't um, gone around the edges here. Now, do I want to just bring a little bit of green there? I'll, I'll take the painting along that way. And um, some of that green I just mixed up, I might bring down here. All right, there we got. There's little gaps I've left, which I'm quite happy for that to happen. Um, uh, green's mixing into some of the buildings so I might just the buildings are getting a bit greeny there I might just dab that out with a rag um, and here that's okay now do I need to put anything else down I don't want to go any darker than that That's what I'm doing for my wash. As I said, I've done nothing about the sky. I'm going to, that's the first thing I'll come to when we get back to this. Now, <clears throat> if if you're new to watercolors, don't be frightened to use as much, to use more water than you think you need. It's always the, the problem if you're beginning watercolors. You, uh, watercolors, you tend not to rely on water and and. It, it is watercolour. Water comes first. Um, and at this stage, things blending in on wet paper is great. It's, it's how it is. It's all very soft. We've not put in any values, not put in any details. We've not put in any roofs. Uh, we've not put in any different coloured buildings uh, and so forth, because we're just wanting a, a basic wash underneath it all. Okay. There. <clears throat> We've done two stages uh, of the four stages that I mentioned in, in this uh, 
way of painting watercolors. Uh, the first being, um, I, I suppose, really, you could say there are five stages because you've one would be the composition, but I, I tend to merge that in with with the drawing. So with the composition and drawing, we, we've, we've talked about. We've then gone into the washes. I've now got a, a bone dry piece of paper here, and uh, uh, now this next stage is the one that's going to take most of the time uh, before we then stand back and look at what, what other little things we need to do just to, to, to finish it off. Uh, as I mentioned before, that um, when I was painting this in Italy, I, I can only imagine I I did the sky and uh, as part of the wash stage and moved into it. What I what what I find I often do, but not always with the sky is 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 I'll I'll do the sky and then I won't touch it again. Everything goes over it. That's not to say you can't touch it again, but but I of, I often don't. Now in in this instance, because of the nature of what I'm doing as a demonstration, I will um I will now do the sky, and then um I'll move into um. Uh, painting this lot here I, I might I, I I might dry the sky a, a little bit but uh, we'll see where we go with that okay um <clears throat> sky I, I think I'm going to stay with my my mop brush for this <laughs> And, um, right, it's um, it, it's a sort of soft sky that I'm after here. It's not a sort of Grecian ultramarine blue, um, uh, intense sky, um, <clears throat> and it's very difficult to see from the photographs that I've taken exactly what the skies are. But but um, that that we weren't. We, we we weren't completely blue and 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 I felt that having a sky with um some clouds in it um what was 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 going to be more conducive with having a a, a softish feel for this um hillside uh, top right um <clears throat> when I'm painting this I will um I, I want I want the colors to merge in with each other. I'm, I may well find that I am dabbing them out with a piece of kitchen towel or something like that. Let's just get rid of this green paint water. Right? The, the 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 three blue blues that I use I introduced you to earlier, which are the cerulean blue, cobalt, cerulean, cobalt, and ultramarine blue. Uh, the this ultramarine being the warmer of the of the three because it's got red in it, and uh, and the cerulean being the coolest of them because it's got more uh, yellow in it making it slightly green and the cobalt somewhere in between the two i'm going i'm going to use cobalt in a moment but uh, let's just talk about a couple of other colors by some here uh we, we've i showed you something of this lemon yellow which which is uh the coolest of the yellows i've got and then something which is uh, the next up which is the midway one which uh, this is actually aurelian but um i mentioned cadmium uh the men so many of these colors that I'm using, all of them, there are other colors which are not dissimilar that you could use. Um, and then I have a color here called New Gamboge, which, which is got a lot more red in it. And um, I don't know why I'll be using that. I, I, I might do. We'll, we'll see. Uh, those are my yellows. Uh, I have got two reds, uh, an orangey red, uh, which is actually Windsor red, but it could be cadmium red. Um, 
and then uh, an alizarin crimson, which has got a lot of blue in it, so it makes it much more purpley. Yeah. So those are my primary colours that I've just run through with you there. Um, I'm going to be wanting to bring in some greys here. And, um, I mean, to make greys out of the three primary colours, you, you, you basically mix them together and use more water to to thin them out or use more of one colour to change the, the effect there. Um, I'm actually trying to think what colour I used here. Uh, well, let's see. Let's see how it goes. Um, yeah, I'm going to need that in a moment. Uh, right, let's let's put um, let's put some cobalt down here. I've tried to remove the green that was down there just to just so it doesn't go too cool. Uh, I've got some cobalt and um, work it down here. Let's just see what happens. I'll come down. Coming down with my cobalt to the buildings. Um, make that a bit bluer here, just by bringing more cobalt back into it. Um, and it's doing a really good job of painting itself at this stage. Let's um, keep it all soft. Uh, I'm splashing. I'm happy to splash the paint around this area. I'm trying to keep it off my buildings and everything. Now, th this um, grey area, uh, mm, um, I, I'm, I'm tempted to go to this colour. I've got a, a a mauve here, but let's see if I can do it with my primary colours. Um, if I pick up the cobalt and um, add a little bit of a lizard, just just hold your horses a moment. Let's see how it's going to work for me. I've 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 got the sort of mauve I was interested in, but it's too bright. So I, I want to tone that brightness down a bit, and I'll. I've, I've, I've got red and I've got blue. I can turn it down by bringing in the other third primary, which is yellow. So let's um, let's try a bit of Aurelian. What's that? What's, let's, let's just pop that in and see what that's like. Yeah, yeah it's going to be something like that. Um, so... down to the buildings so this this mop brush is is pretty good because it you can get a quite a nice point on it so i can take it around the buildings around the roofs around the some of the chimneys if i go with them it doesn't matter uh, and put that in there um Let's bring some of that move up here. Using a, uh, a rag here just to to soften some of that. Uh, I think I'll bring a bit more mauve up the top here. Let's mix something. What colours did I use? Cobalt, wasn't it? Cobalt and alizarin. It gave me that. It gave me that sort of violet colour. And then I added some I'm not going to green. That's too green for what I want. Um, let's get back here. Cobalt, Lizrian, and just a little bit. That's 
all my papers still wet at the moment, so I'm I'm happy to. Um, and I think I'll as, as it comes down to a little bit, I'll lighten it. Let's lighten it here as well a bit. Okay, have I got enough? Um, everything's pretty wet here, uh, and uh, it, you find that if you put wet paint on, that's too dark. If you put wet paint on something that's not quite dry, you get these sort of cabbages or um, um, cauliflowers. Or, uh, uh, but, but if everything's pretty wet as it is here, I kind of didn't want my sky to be Powerful. I didn't want it to be an overriding presence there. So maybe, maybe that's enough. Must be clouds up there, possibly. I've left little gaps here. I've been been happy to leave them there. I've, I've got a feeling I ought to leave it at that stage. Yeah. I'm going to leave that sky at that stage. I'm switching now. I think I'll switch to this smaller mop brush, which is exactly the same here as, as the bigger one. And it does the same sort of thing. It picks up um, it picks up water very well, and it also goes to a point. And, um, and we'll start um, putting in... Okay, well, it really doesn't matter in a sense where you go with this. I'm I'm going to mix. I'm going to put put a lot of roofs in now. A lot of my roofs, I think. Um, and this, and 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 then work on from there. So, uh, let's um, colors for that. Well, they all vary. They're they're pretty much all terracotta. These roofs, um, as it happens, more or less. Uh, so I'm going to. Go with, uh, let's start off with this color, which is burnt sienna. Yeah. That's what that looks like. Burnt sienna. A little bit too brown, so I'll pop in a little bit of the light red. I have, when we're talking about uh, some other colors, I also have this color here, which is um orange um and i don't use it very much in fact it's probably working its way out of my palette uh and i don't want it to be that sort of orange um but in putting in putting down these roofs i'm conscious that they all that a lot of them vary slightly and also uh they'll have shadows over some of them so i'm, I'm not going to worry about the shadows at the moment it's just uh Let's see how that goes. Is that going to? Let's do this one. Um, might add a bit more yellow to that. With this gamberish. Okay, let's pop in a few roofs. Got some buildings over here. Useful. You don't see very much of the roofs uh, in some of these buildings because you are looking up at them, but uh, others show up a little bit more. It's just some of these are just strips at the top, if that. Um. I haven't, I haven't varied it like this at all. I mean, they, at the moment, I'm quite happy just to put the roofs in.
you want to add in more buildings at this stage, that's just fine. Um, what am I doing here? This um, red that we're putting in, particularly down amongst all the greenery, is quite good because it's a red is a complementary color to green, and it, it just helps to break up uh, the the big deluge of green we've got here. Is there anything else going on here? I want to put some buildings in. I might just add a building or two here. If I find in more roofs that I want to deal with, that that's just fine. I'll do that later on. Uh, I'll talk about where I'll go next whilst you're playing. So I've, I've put roofs in there. If you want to lighten the roofs up, up a bit, um, vary them, add more yellows and whatever. But it's I'm going to put a variety of uh, house colours in now uh, to just to mix it up a little bit. There are a couple of uh, sort of a brick red, or uh, sort of Tuscan red uh, houses here. So let's pick up a little bit of burnt sienna. Um, and let's pop a couple of those in. This one here. With that a little, a little redder with a touch of a light red, just to work its way in there, and um, this has the little red one. Lots of yellowy houses with a sort of uh, 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 the yellow that is used a lot in that part of the world. So I'm, I'm going back to my, let's see how it goes. I'll pick up a bit of my yellow ochre here and uh, put in a few of these houses. Um, that's maybe a bit too strong, so I'll come away from that. Uh, and Go ahead and have lots of fun painting the houses that you're whatever colors you want. Um, and, and, um, Altering it a bit, I'm, I'm, I'm just taking that colour and adding a bit of red just so that I get some differences, different kinds of houses here. But a lot of them are quite light. The light of colour, of course, is what we put down as a wash. So if with um, this big house here, it's a sort of, actually, that, that colour, if anyone has got Naples yellow, that might not be a bad yellow to use for that, but I don't have it. So I'll... Let's see how I go with a bit of this Aurelian. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh -huh. I haven't put any shadows in yet. Uh, I'm just looking at the base color of some of these and um, that sort of stands out a bit as a yellow house. I, I'm, I'm happy for that to happen. Right. going on here. I don't feel you've got to paint every house because, um, as I said, the colours you put in in the early wash, I can't remember the colour, uh, are dealing with that all right. The church, mm, I, I, I think I'm, I'll, I'll go to my yellow oak and See how that looks, maybe add a something, make it slightly pinky. See how that works. What's it look like in the photograph? I got it. And the dome at the top. It's got a sort of blueness to it. It's, it's um Do the same colour and drop some other colour into it. It's also got the light very noticeably um, coming from the left hand side. I'm just going to put a bit of blue and see what happens if I do that. I'll keep the left hand side light. I, I think I might go a bit darker uh, in a moment. It's just. Let's make that look a little different like that. It's okay. Right, anything else I think I need to do on the buildings? Let's see, do I want to add anything at this stage? Put in any more buildings? Um, I'm, I'm work out what to do with this area. Let's have a look at the photograph. Um, there's a sort of very levels here. I don't know whether I remember walking up that you sort of zigzag your way up to the top here. Um I don't know whether I can show any of that. Ah, I think that's enough. Right. <clears throat> I'm going to look at the greenery that's going on uh, before I come back and turn my attention to uh, the buildings. And um, no, I won't do that. I'll, I'll, um, I'll, I'll deal with the windows. Right, <clears throat> these. I don't know if you can see this now um, in the photograph, but in, in the painting that I did. Let's see if I can get you. To see the light is coming from the left which so at a sort of 45 degree angle sort of thing um that as i said before is going to throw a lot of the other sides of the building into shadow and the other sides of the greenery as well uh into shadows the church has got the shadow on this side for instance and the light on that side and the dome uh, and so forth. Um, when I paint the windows, I want to do as little as I can to get away with it. And I will, I'll go around and just put a little splash of greys where the windows are. And where I want the light 
to be accentuated. Now, I don't know if you can see this. For instance, look at this window in the church here. I've I've gone back later on when I'm doing my accents and just put something a little bit darker up the top where it is dark. Where things are in shadow, they sort of get lost in an overall shadow. But where you want the light to be accentuated, like the light coming in on here, then that's quite a, quite a useful thing to do. Um, look at this. See if I can explain that as well as I, I paint along. I'm going to use my my mop brush, the point of my mop brush. I, I could go for a rigger at this stage, but I'll, I'll leave that. And I'm going to mix up some sort of a grey colour. So you got your three primaries here. Let's just take something that I've got on my palette, mix it in with this a little bit, a bit more blue, and a little bit of red. Let's try the crimson. And um, let's see what I've got here. All right. Windows. Uh, watercolour always dries a little bit lighter than uh, it at first appears. So I'm going to touch that in here. There's a window. There. Look at this there. I'm going around and popping in some windows at this point. Uh, and I'm not trying to get a perfect rectangle with this. It, what's going to really make them work is when we do add that other color uh, later on to them. Some of them I'll go over again. And Yeah, I'm, I'm just going and popping in windows where I want there to be some windows. It all helps to make it look as if it's a village as well. That's wet. Come back to that. Down this side. If if it is so wet, um, as I've just discovered, some of mine is, as I'll come back to it in a moment. I'll be revisiting these windows. Just establish something about them. What's going on up here? And these little, where the, the bell is kept, these little nooks, I'll put something in here. Okay. Um, kind of making them up now. Right, they don't look terribly effective as windows at the moment, but they, they they will come into their own shortly. The looser we can keep it, the less defined, in my view, is um, the, the the more helpful that will be for the buildings. They're, they're very angular. The buildings are very different in color um, when compared with the the trees and the greenery. So. We'll try and keep the whole thing as loose as possible. What we what we'll 
try and do is is to get the light parts of the, the bushes, the trees, and so forth, to where, especially where you want them to be, like where the sun is on them, to have something dark next to them to make them appear lighter. And conscious, we're trying to vary uh, the greenery as well as we as we go along, so we don't have a or a, a flat or green everywhere like that. So we'll we'll do that and. Despite all the good intentions of where you're going to put your trees and where you've drawn your lines and wiggles and things, you may well find, and don't feel absolutely free to do this, that you're going to put trees in where you didn't think there were trees and things changing. Just just keeping in mind the, the overall feel of the painting as it, as it develops on. Um, we're not producing, we're not taking a photograph, we're not got an exact rep, rep, uh, representation of what we've looked at, albeit... Uh, um, photographic one we're responding to all of this greenery here and I made a conscious decision not to take it right up to the edges because I I didn't want to overload this particular painting with a lot of green um, and I want to now make sure that I get the variation in values lights against darks wherever I can, in some places make them even darker. Um, and in some places, as I will show you in a moment, I brought in colours which you might not think are there in order just to play the green down a little bit. You'll, you'll find that I'll drop in some colours, uh, particularly things like raw sienna, uh, burnt sienna and things like that, just to play reds against greens. So it's a little bit of a game, this uh, a bit. I'm, um, I'm bringing out this bad haircut brush. Now, if you don't have one of these, that's fine. Um, what, what, what you can do is you can um, take, say, a mop brush like this and and just splay it out, as I've done there, and you've got, you got your bad haircut. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is because I'll, in, in places, I'm going to put in blocks of of, of different greens and colours. Uh, and I don't actually want... I mean, this is about as abstract as you're going to get in this painting, this type of painting. I don't want to um, try and delineate individual trees. I just want there to be this mass of green varied, which makes these buildings the focal focal point of the painting which makes them work so the tree the greenery is there to support this hilltop village uh, is of course it's an important part of it but don't let it overwhelm it right um i think we'll be do doing a fair amount of wet painting on to wet painting here but nearly always i'll have something wet on the paper and i'll bring a stronger color into it. Um, the, 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 I mentioned this thing about cabbages and cauliflowers and everything, which which often comes when you have a wet paper and you bring more wet into it. But but as you'll see, you know, if we um, let me just try and explain. If we if we want uh, the tops of the trees to be catching the light then down at the bottom where the light isn't, then we'll drop in a stronger, darker colour and let it kind of paint itself. It's always like, hope for the best, this job. Uh, let's see how it goes. I'll, uh, I, I'll, I'll start off with my mop, for those of you who haven't got this bad haircut, and just show you how you do that. But I might revert to my bad haircut one in a moment. So what have we got? Um, I'll kind of work across the paper, but but we'll see how that goes. Um, I've got in here. Yeah, let, let's 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 go to my sap green, and I'll put. That's too bright. It's just much too bright a green here. But if I put 
um, a bit of cobalt with it. That's still too bright. Uh, just a little touch of um, a little touch of red. That little touch of red will grey it down. That's beginning to grey it down a bit because it it is a complementary colour. The 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 green is in effect yellow and blue, and we 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 move the yellow and blue around to make green. But if you bring in the third primary colour, a bit of red to it, it starts to muddy it down a bit like what happens to your water pot when you finish your painting at the end of the day. So just muddy it down a little bit, but only a little bit. Ooh, let's see how that goes. Uh, and just put some of that down in here. So I'm I'm deliberately using my brush almost as if I'm going down on it. I'm at some some stages when I want to have some growth going up uh, here, I'll I'll do that and maybe just watch what I'm doing here. And I'll, um, having done that little bit, I'm going to pop in here some strong darker color. So I'll pick up um, a bit of ultramarine blue, not a lot of water because I've got water on the page. A little bit of that, mix it with a little bit of sap green maybe and and just pop that down near the bottom where where the light doesn't get. And can you see it's kind of painting itself here? We've got to keep our fingers crossed it does that job for us. And where it is against something light, that's suggesting something in front of it. That's the technique I'm using uh, as we go along here. So let's um let's just paint something in here. I'm gonna put a post here. Uh, a white post, I think that might be a good idea. Uh, so I'll, I'll, if I can, avoid painting around that. And I'm coming in and doing a um, uh, a slightly different green. I'll um, I'll go back to my sap and uh, I'll, I'll I'll try a little bit of ultramarine blue with it. Okay, and uh, and that post, let's um, leave that out of it if we can. Uh, and this is the all the bamboo area here, so let's come around that. I've got a house there, right? So. Pop in some red here. Strong burnt sienna. This is the point. It, it, you've, it's all to do with water. You've got your water on the page. That You don't need lots and lots of it in your brush. I, I'm, I'm doing this almost dry brush and just putting a little bit of that in. I'm, I'm going to make that dark and bring in some ultramarine blue and just... And this this sort of weird brush um, is doing things that, in in a sense, you you could almost not uh, you 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 couldn't in the month of Sundays predict what it's going to do. So that's just playing around with something there. I'm going to drop a little bit more dark ultramarine blue just here, so that I'm playing the values, the lights and the darks against each other. Um, and once I've got that dark green, let's put in a couple of things here. So these cypress trees here. There's a sort of abstract feel about the way you're painting here. You're, you're, you're just looking at lights and darks and maybe a little bit of red thrown in here just to throw the, the greens you're getting. And, and then I'm coming here to this bamboo, which I, I started off with making it this light 
uh, green. So the way I'm going to make this light is um, by having quite a lot of dark around it. Let's see. Have a look at the photographs if that helps me. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to paint down to here. What's going on up here? Something. So I'm I'm moving around. I find sap green a really useful color because I I tend to go to it and mix other colors with it and and then come back to it here. Uh, I'll pick the trees up amongst the buildings. Yeah, let's add a bit of yellow to that. Make that a bit more yellow here. A bit more yellow. Well, I like that idea of having some more yellow. I'll, I'll drop some, I'll drop a bit of pure yellow in there just to, just to vary it a bit. And then come on down here and go back to around this house. Am I going to cover the house? Yeah, I'll just cover the. How do we get the, the the spiky feeling all the bamboo I've, I've i've really gone for my bad hairbrush haircut there all right bring in some darker colors around here um ultramarine blue is quite useful for that i might even mix a bit of burnt sienna with it keeping it the pigment as free of water as i can uh i'm going to some of that here. And drop some of that right. So it's 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 simple really. The light's coming down, it's catching the tops of the, the bushes and the trees, it's throwing shadows onto the other side. And I I'm almost not looking at the photographs now. I'm I'm kind of making it up as I go along. I uh you might find that helpful or, or not, but uh, that, that's what I'm doing. If I want to come in with some darker trees, um, I will. Now, for instance, let me show you what I mean by that. Uh, if if I go to my sap green, ultramarine blue, I've got really quite a dark green there. And here... Just going to have some of these trees sticking up uh, like that. Good luck, everybody, as you're progressing with this. It's uh, you you sort of hope for the best, really, with this, and and keep going at it. Hopefully, that's sort of loose enough now to uh, to just carry on that idea. I'm conscious that the light's coming this way. There's going to be, uh, particularly up here, there's going to be more dark and down here, I think, uh, and in amongst the buildings a little bit. So let's let's go on. So I've been using sap green. I've been using, um, uh, what have you, I haven't actually mixed a green, um, uh, which, which I could try doing. Um, I'm a bit of a lazy person here because I, I often go to that sap green. We could try mixing a green. Uh, uh, what do I, what sort of? Um, oh, I'm going around. This what have we got? I can't go to. If it's um, okay, I've got the bit of new gambo's yellow here. Let's um. Put that in where the light is, and 
add some ultramarine blue, a bit of burnt sienna in down here. So, so that's taking us up to around the, the bamboo. The bamboo itself. I mix the first bamboo color with a bit of lemon yellow and cerulean blue. But let's see if I can go back to that. Yeah, it's gone it's too bright, so I'm going to add some red to it. Oh, too, too red. It's not good enough. Red's such a, uh, a dominant color. And, and add a bit of burnt sienna. That's that. A bit of ultramarine. Okay, let's just see. Um, Every now and then, you can use your fingernail just to run through, a bit like Moses parting the waves. You can sort of, just a few little marks like that, which um, give a variety to the, uh, particularly if you drop a little bit of dark around them. Right, you can see that this is going to be the longest bit of the painting as we work our way around. We'll just keep going with this. If we, if we can get this sorted out, then we've practically finished the painting. Um, it's odd, really, isn't it? Because it's the bit of the painting where I feel you don't want to overemphasize it, lest it distracts you from what's happening in the buildings. <laughs> it's the bit that we can probably spend most most of our time on. So I'm moving around the colours, the sap green, adding blues to it, sometimes adding some yellows. Uh, let's work out. I'm going to make this area quite dark, I think. So, um, and it's going to go around my post that I want to stand out somebody's asking what did you add to the new gamboge i'm sorry what was the question someone's asking what did you add to the gamboge new gamboge oh uh i i, I think all i can say is that <clears throat> I'm playing around with different greens. I'm either wanting them to go um, towards the bluey or towards the yellow, which we started off with our washes. Uh, and I'm also playing around with the lightness of them, the values. So quite often I'll put, I put as I've done here, some light colours up here. And then with stronger colours, let me just show you, uh, ultramarine blue, and, and on on this brush, I don't have that much water. I'm I'm just putting in again uh, down the bottom some stronger colours. The, the contrast you get here, even just doing that, this little bit of light here suggests there's something in front of that. But if you feel that you need to push it a bit more. Uh, and and make this area a bit darker. Then I'll 
I'll go for my diet. Something we can come back to if necessary. Uh, I, I, this is almost got no water in it at all uh, because all the water I, I need for this is on the paper. And a, a lot of what's happening is painting itself. I've deliberately sort of gone here to make this a more, um, a, a, a slightly more yellow area here before we move on. And, and all the time, I'm just trying to avoid the, the greenery getting a grip of me and taking over the painting. The gambos I used to um, to warm up the green, I think, is probably the best way of describing that. And these um, trees break across the buildings. You'll find that as when we come back at, and look at what we've done, if you wanted to add a bit more to this, um, then you can always do so. Uh, there's a lot of... So I, I tend to put down something light and then bring in something dark, particularly in this case, down the bottom. I've just put in this sort of lightness here, but I'll, I'll get something dark, put it near the bottom, and that sort of paints itself into what I've already put down as light. I'm not, I'm letting it paint itself in a sense. This one here. And as the things are going away, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get even looser with uh, what I'm doing. Okay. So that's such an important thing to do with watercolors, this business of knowing where your water is. Um, that can either be on the paper in your brush um, and knowing how much you've got and and if you've got the water as I'm doing a lot here I'm actually using the wet watercolor on the surface of the paper and then I'm bringing in stronger colors to it to, to merge in and paint itself in almost certainly I'll come back and look at the values and alter them slightly later on but i'm just trying to take myself across the hillside and and establish sort of sort of uh, 80 90 percent of what's going on here it's quite a lot of dark green up here i'll come to that in a moment um what's going on here some yellows i think needed so seeing as that person mentioned gamboge let's bring some gamboge in and when mixed with any kind of the blues, it, it, it it'll it, this is quite a sort of almost an olive green it's producing. Uh, where do I want that running up here? Maybe yellow to that. This whole area I've just painted here, it's pretty much the same. I've just dropped some gamboge into other areas, but it's it's um it it's a light color. So I'll now bring in something darker. I've been using quite a lot of ultramarine blue to do that.
down your your green hillside, you can sigh a huge sigh of relief. It's all downhill after that, I think, this painting. Uh, right, let's go back to... So I'm, I'm happy at the moment. I've got a sort of variety of different types of greens, some yellows coming in here. Um, some cobalt and change my green a bit around here this is slightly different type of green so in a sense this is about as abstract this kind of representational painting we're doing as, as you'll get where the way i'm doing it anyway is, is i'm I'm, I'm just looking at it as if it were an abstract painting. Let's bring a little bit more of something red there or break that up with a, with, with a contrast or something like that. Not, not almost not worrying too much what it is in terms of it being uh, a, a green hillside, thinking much more about how the colours work with, with each other. The overall effect is going to be a hillside of green trees. Um, I hope. We hope. Where did you get your money back? Oh, it's hard work going up this hill. We're getting there. From these two hilltop villages, particularly the one we were at, all right, and, and the other one, we would, uh, you could uh, walk around and look down and you'd see in the distance La Spezia, the um, maritime port was very infamous during the last war uh, and the uh, the sun glinting on the river that would run its way towards the space it was just a it was a really grand sight um, whilst we waited for our van to be repaired ah oh, the doctor um, oh, that. and break up this area here it's, there's a lot of green um after all of this it'll be a relief to get back to the buildings <laughs> so if you want anything to stand out contrast wise then bringing something, uh, stand out, say, as light, then you bring something dark against it. Um, and so up against some of these roofs that I want to stand out, I'm deliberately coming in with some darker greens, darker colours, which will help to make the roofs stand out. You'll, you'll see that as you, as you go along. Now, I'm getting up to the top of my hill here, and it's... Um, a lot of it is much darker. There's even a little bit of sky showing through, which I've completely forgotten about. Another kind of brush you could use to to um is I I introduce you to it at the start, which. I don't know whether I will use, is this dagger. Remember, I showed you this dagger. I've got two different sizes. And that that can give you some very fine lines and some really weird shapes. Um, I, I, I seem to be doing all right with the, the, the stubby brush. I haven't even used my bad haircut. I've done it all with uh, by misusing my um, 
my mop, if you like. Let's bring in. Um, I wanted to overlay some something a bit red down here, um, uh, which is a burnt sienna I put in. I think I could do with some red down there. And up the top. Now these trees up the top are quite dark. They're they're against the sky, and they're against the light really as well. So I've gone to my sap green. Um, I'll make it quite a dark green. I can always darken it up a bit later on. So I've added some burnt sienna and some ultramarine, and I'm still using. Uh, my my moppy brush but i'm going to um i'm going to paint them slightly differently from the photographs i'm going to give them some points like this um Every now and then I deliberately bring in uh, some burnt sienna, some which I'm using as my this, what I call red, just to bring the changes in the greens. Now I'm looking at my painting and I'm going back around it. I'm gonna make I'm gonna make this darker, the greens here, a bit darker, because they're on the other side of all the light and in the shadow. And um and make some things a bit darker here. So let's go. My dark greens. Then I'm going. I'm going to my sap green, adding ultramarine blue, and I can further darken that by adding a little bit of burnt sienna. So ultramarine blue and burnt sienna make quite a dark color. Right. Let's see if I can just make this area a bit darker than I had previously done it. Something like that. And so and so let's move now into the buildings. They, they are they're very flat. Um I, I at the start I was talking about the light coming in on this side here and and therefore the light's going to be hitting the buildings that are facing it or, or whatever and the shadows are going to be on the other side um the way i'll do that is by laying down uh, a sort of basic shadow uh and wherever i feel i want to darken it or whatever i i can increase the amount of pigment that goes in but we're going to get the overall effect of the light coming onto the buildings here. Yeah. And uh, I'll go to my mop brush, which I've been using up until now. And the color that I'm going to use for this, um, I, I want it to be uh, a, um, a slightly blue shadow. 
um, not too green, uh, but I'm also conscious of the, the, what I said at the start, that I want this to be a sort of soft, a softer light as opposed to a harsh light. So um, let's just get, um, I, I will mix a shadow colour, but I, I will, particularly when it's on the paper, add other things to it if I need to do so. So this is, if you like, your default shadow colour. I'm using cobalt blue. and burnt sienna. Uh, if you put too much burnt sienna in, this will go brown. And I've got a sort of blue there. Now, it, it, the, the question is, is this, is this going to be strong enough? Because I want to try and get it down in one go. Um, it's also going to be covering some of the colours we got here. So where it cover colours... Um, the, uh, the 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 yellow buildings it will go a little more green so it's always very difficult to to know that um, I'm just trying a little bit I'm going to make that a bit stronger it, it always dries lighter does watercolor than you think all right let's see how that goes um. I'll leave that dome. I'll come back to that dome in a moment. So I'm going to pop in under the eaves. Uh, this building up here is in shadow. Now, is that too blue? Um, it may be just a tad too dark. I'll just put a bit more water in that. Okay. So uh <clears throat> the um the, it depends on how you want the, your light to be i'm going to put uh, a little bit of uh shadow under the roof there and on that side because that's away from uh, uh, uh the uh the sun i'm also going to bring a sort of suggestion of shadow coming down there um, under the eaves a little bit on this side and if if you want to add any more windows in at this stage um, then th this will be a, a, a good sort of thing to put on it and then take myself around now, this building, this church actually is curved so I'm going to uh, put that down and then with a slightly wet brush, just water, just soften it down so it goes into the curve. All right. And that's, in fact, what I'll do is we'll, we'll go back to this dome. If I put a bit of the shadow on the dark side of the dome, just by using my finger or um I'm gonna make I'm gonna make that a bit stronger that dome just to change its color just add a little bit of more burnt sienna and some ultramarine blue to that let's see how that goes just make that a little bit oops Uh, that's also curved, so touch it off with your finger, touch it off with a wet brush or whatever. Let's go back and put uh, a shadow here. So th this can be quite quickly done, really, just working in shadows. And it might be that the trees are casting shadows on certain parts of the buildings as well. Uh, I'll put a little bit of shadow on this side of the roof of that church. Uh, up 
here. And when your paint runs out, you've got to go and uh, mix up some more. There we go. So I'm going to mix up some more. I use cobalt and a bit of burnt sienna. I've deliberately chosen uh, to sort of have painted it this time of the day so that you do get um, the, the two photographs I've got here. One, one this one on here, is it, it, the buildings are, are flatter than this one here. And I, I like the, uh, the difference, the juxtaposition of the um, light against the darks, the shadows. So we're quite quickly uh, establishing what's happening with the buildings here. A lot of them are in shadow on this side. Being all right for time, goes because we're sort of moving into finishing off the painting fairly quickly now. Um, so it's playing now. You, you get better feel for the light and the dark, depending on how dark you've made your shadows. We're going to come in and put some accents in, which will, which enhance what we've already done. Um, It might be when we've <clears throat> we finish this session and you you've had a drink or whatever and you come back in the morning uh, and have a look at it. It might be that you think, oh, I'll, I'll just nudge this this way a little bit, make that a little bit darker this way. I'm I'm just wondering whether I need to add a bit more contrast here, for instance. Um, I'll I'll look at that either now or before we go. I'm just seeing where. what needs to be done further. I'm really not sure about what more I can do to the green here. 
and I, I think I might uh, leave it at that and um, possibly come back and do something to it before I photograph it and send it on to you. I, I, I'm just wondering whether I can strengthen the for, this bit of foreground up somehow to br just bring this forwards a little bit. And the way that maybe I'll do that, yeah, I will. I'll, I'll show you what I'll do here. And then when I've done that, that come that brings us to the end of the third stage. And then we just come in and, and finish off with some accents. I think I will do that now. Um, I'm, I'm want, so what I'm wanting to do is just bring this, this bit forwards a little bit, make it a little bit stronger. I think especially because this is so dark up here. It, it It's somehow jumping out at me over this. So <clears throat> this, this may or may not apply to what you're doing, but if you can so watch how I'm going to approach that. Uh, This tends to be a bit more yellow and this a bit more blue. So let, let's let's have a look here with the yellow. If if I pick up my go back, pick up my sap green and add some blue to it, ultramarine blue, and, and just bring in some of this gamboge. That makes it sort of more yellow. It needs to go darker. Right, it could probably even go darker than that, but um, also, what I'll do is because I, I don't want this to be too harsh, I, I, I've just picked up a wet brush and at the tops of the areas where. I'm where, where I'm thinking about. I'm just going to wet this in a bit here. Uh, let's just wet that in a little bit. And then go to this first dark color that I picked up. I can make it darker still, I think. Uh, and put, this will also accentuate the post that I've got. And just paint that up a little bit here. Now that's going to touch some of the water that I, I put there and soften it. So I've got some hard edges and some soft. Bring something into the foreground here. All right. That's my white post. Uh, I'll make that even darker whilst it's all still wet. And then over here, it's a little more blue. So um, I'll go back to sap green again and put in some cobalt. Um, and it's still a, it's a little bit wet there. I've got a post here, which That's all the messing around I'm going to do. I, I just wanted to make that a bit stronger. Okay, I, I feel now it it's not fighting with that bit here. This next stage um, I'm going to do entirely with this rigger, um, just to finish it off. I want to add accents to the 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 shadows on the buildings and the windows and things like that, and I want to bring. Um, this 
this little line here, this diagonal line. I'm doing that. Right, here we go. Um, using ultramarine blue strongly and burnt sienna. You could use alt you could use burnt umber if you want. I'm mixing up a really dark sludge here. I think that's probably darker than I need. So let's just see how it goes. Add a bit more blue. If it's too darker, I'll I'll add more water to it. And I want to bring in some accents here. Uh, I talked about these windows. Now, if, if I look um, here, if I add, if I just do that now, is that that might be a little bit too dark and a little bit too blue as well. Let's lighten it down, more water. My rigor. I'm using very finely just to make one or two little marks. As I call them accents. Where I put... Um, further away, the less I contrast it is. So we do a bit there. I take, I take this just, you see, under the line of the, <clears throat> the roof, it'll um, make that shadow work a bit better. I'm touching in a little bit of darkness and uh, where, where we put that gray in um, some time ago um, here. When you're doing lines of anything, you don't don't feel you need to follow the whole line. You can do the sort of the lost and found of breaking the line up a little bit. Uh, let's put a And this will start to emphasize the light that's going on on the buildings, just doing this sort of thing. As things are a bit closer to you, they, the, the contrast is more stark and as I go away, I'm just putting a bit of water on my brush to lighten it. I've also got um, little aerials and things like that that we can pop in. This hopefully will add that extra dimension just to bring the um the strong the the feeling of the strong light falling on everything.
very nearly at the end of it. As I said, it's a curious thing. We spent so much time on all this greenery, and yet we've been trying all the time to subdue it a bit. Um, right. So any points that you feel uh, will help to pick the village up and and show the effects of the light on it that fit in with your style of painting. And the last thing I'm going to do is this white line. Just, just something coming down here. Now, I mentioned that when we were talking about the composition. I'm going to my tube of white gouache. using my rigger brush. I really don't want to over overcook this. Um, so if we sort of coming down here, a little bit more than that maybe, just a little bit more. That may or may not be enough, but uh, it was something I noticed when I did the painting that I wanted to bring in compositionally. And short of going away and having uh, just relaxing and, uh, and coming back and maybe doing anything that you think um, you might have left out that would add to it, that is the painting finished. Well done, everybody. All done.